going back to people like Simon, just them seeing you and believing your ability, that's definitely, I think, a major key. Like, that's why I would want to make sure that with my journey, I mentor as much people as possible. Initially as a floor runner, that was my initial way into the industry. I started off as a floor runner, and then I started thirding, and now I second and first, as well as produce. Um, but yeah, that was my, my journey in, I guess. And how did you get the top boy opportunity? So because I did season one, season two, and also season three, but let's go back to season two. Because I did season one, I had that rapport and that connection with um, the producers and a lot of the, the crew. On other productions, for sure, every single production that I've gone into, I've always made it a thing where I go and find out who the producer is and I introduce myself because when I started off in the industry, I wanted to produce. That was my end goal. That was the only thing I wanted to do and I saw myself doing. Um, so I'd often go in, even if I was just there for the day, I'd look at the call sheet, find out who the producer is, maybe try and get hold of the unit list, sneaky, and try and get their details off it and then contact them later on down the line. Uh, so I came up quite a traditional route, I guess, like in terms of, um, I went to Bournemouth Arts, where I did four years of film production, specialised in directing at the end of it. And then I did, um, I did an MA at the NFTS, and I was still at NFTS when I got the mentee scheme for uh, season one of Top Boy. But I came from a PA background, so, <laughs> you know, like organising calendars, setting calls, teas and coffees, all of that stuff above and beyond. Um, so, yeah, but it kind of taught me I had my pockets in like different areas of the company. I used to work for a company called Misfits Entertainment. And it just taught me a lot about like how to pitch things, how to like create treatments, how to just communicate within this industry and navigate it, which it's a jungle for me personally. Um, so, yeah, that's what I was kind of doing before ITV Fresh Cuts. But before then, um, I did a short film for the Roundhouse as part of their like film fund as well. So um, I had a little bit of experience in filmmaking, but not, not a ton. There's so many different ways to become a producer. There's not one way. And I think someone taught me early on in my career, and I wish I would have probably listened to them a little bit closer, but they were saying, if you want to produce, if you want to direct, just go out there and start producing. So that's probably the biggest thing that I'd say to you guys that are sat watching us and looking at us thinking, oh my gosh, I wish I could do something as amazing as them. Yeah. Just go out there and do it because yeah. what's holding you back at the end of the day, there's so many opportunities, so many people that you can work with, not only in your local area, mm. but also within the industry. So I started off in the industry, um, I'm from Derby originally, and I moved to Birmingham um, just because I fancied a new start. Again, not much happens <laughs> in Derby. <laughs> and um, yeah, I just used to watch those documentaries and just like, you know, was about 18, 19, really kind of like, you know, went to university, did things, um, did a course in psychotherapy um, and counselling and got on to do a foundation degree in that. But then... I just kind of felt like, you know what, I really want to make films, but I don't know how to do it. So I literally searched like BBC on Twitter and then I found this BBC Get An Event that was happening at Mailbox in Birmingham. And I just kind of like actually snuck off like for my lunch break <laughs> and, and actually I like, used my lunch break to go there. And um, I ended up like speaking to the production manager, Elena Stodjevic, who uh, runs the BBC Academy uh, scheme there. And she said, if you've got ideas, like just apply for this apprenticeship scheme. And I was like, mm, I don't know if I'm... I'm good, my ideas are good enough. Anyway, I did it and I ended up getting in. Um, and I moved to London and I did like a year long apprenticeship where I was working as like a runner across like BBC Free Productions. Um, I learned how to edit there. And then I got my first job in uh, as being as a production secretary at IMG Media. And I kind of felt a bit like, okay, so I moved to London. I want to kind of be a filmmaker, but I'm not kind of really filmmaking. So I ended up researching another scheme and ended up getting a scholarship to the National Film Television School. I think Simon Broadley, who actually uh, did the course at the mm -hmm. NFTS, was probably my biggest mentor in terms of my journey because he kind of was like, you know, your CV is like shit. Like, like, <laughs> this is how you structure your CV, you want to work in the media. And I didn't know any of that stuff. So I, I think a lot of this is like uh, confidence as well. I think you really have to kind of like believe that you are a filmmaker yeah. and like literally, if, even if it is like you're using your iPhone to make this, because cameras are expensive when you first start out, you're making a film. So yeah, sometimes I guess when you get rejected in the industry, which is just the nature of it, mm -hmm. that's just because mm -hmm. it's a competitive industry, so that can make you be a bit like, oh, actually, this is really for me. And so I think going back to people like Simon, just them seeing you and believing your ability, that's definitely, I think, a major key. Like, that's why I would want to make sure that with my journey, I mentor as much people as possible because, yeah, I think we all can relate. It can get tiresome if mm. you get the nose. 
Uh, he helped tell me. My, my CV was the biggest one because I literally was, didn't know why I was getting so many rejections. <laughs> um, helped me with my CV. I think he um, he helped me sort of like think about the skills that I had maybe outside of TV as well. We can, you can all get quite artsy in TV and quite filmy in terms of the language that we use, but actually just having people skills, being able to actually like use interpersonal skills. So mm. that kind of counselling background that I came from definitely helped. Mm. I think a lot of the films that I kind of want to make were a bit out there. Hence, I guess my first film was about Brazilian butt lift surgery. And I I didn't know if I was quite fitted for the current affairs market. And I think he kind of helped me to believe that actually that's your whole USP. You've got a, a background in helping people with sensitive things. So if you want to tell sensitive stories, do that. That's different. Yeah. So just interested in how the mentor scheme worked for you guys on Top Boy mm -hmm. and how that supported you through that process. I guess it's like a parent taking your hand and saying, look, I'm with you every step of the way. Um, my, the producer that was mentoring me was Tina. She's also from Derby. Derby's, <laughs> Derby's Derby very, yeah, it's like crazy. It's like you come to London, you meet all these people from Derby. It's like you all are hiding. Um, so I guess for me, it was her assessing what my strengths and weaknesses are, seeing where I'm at and also helping me to get to where I want to be. Those are the things that I, I said, I'd, I'd, I'd say I got out of my time being with her. Um, and also, not just with her, but also the connections that she has, you know, the execs, the directors, the writers, the whole family that comes with um, being on a film set. It's not a case of like a weekly check-in or a, a monthly check-in, at least that's what I found. Yeah. Um, it was whenever I sort of needed a bit of support and a bit of help, it was always there. And it wasn't just from, again, yes, I'm a, I'm a producer, but and I think often people think that, oh, you need to have a producer that's a mentee, but there's so many things you can learn from a load of different people, from a different, even people that are mechanics, for example, they could be your mentee. I know it sounds really crazy, yeah. but someone that runs their own business, you know, they could have like budgeting skills that you might not have. So it's not just people within the industry that can be your mentee as well. It's often people that don't understand the industry that might actually be more beneficial to you. I remember though, I went up to Charles and Ali, who are the producers and the execs of Top Boy, and also Yvonne at the time, she was the series producer, and I just said, can I please do some second unit? Um, and they were like, uh, yeah, we'll think about it, we'll see. Eventually, I kept pushing and just asking every week, and I asked Anil, look, can I do some second unit? And yeah, I, you don't ask, you don't get, and mm -hmm. if you don't persist, you don't get a response, so I kept persisting. Um, Eventually they, yeah, they relented and they gave me a full day of second unit, which involved working with um, Jasmine Jobson and Joshua Blissett, who um, at the time were like, you know, secondary characters, but they were so generous and, you know, I had a full crew and it was a bit intimidating, but it was also just a really good confidence boost. Um, and then, yeah, the, doing the second unit, I think, helped massively in terms of, my next steps because um, it just, it made me feel like, okay, I can do this, that's fine. And it, I think it made the producers see, okay, she can do this. So then I got, that's how I got the job for the next season doing one episode. I had a Neil Carrier who, uh, so he did the last three episodes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did the last three episodes of the season. And it, it was very much just being a bit of a sponge and an observant. There were times where I realized he was also learning stuff and it felt so freeing to see him ask questions I would have asked at the yeah. time. And uh, it made me not afraid to ask questions that you know you perceive as being stupid when you actually get on set. Um, quite actually like you, I never had like an actual mentor. Like I had different people in different areas just kind of lending me like advice and how to navigate everything. So, you know, from even from ITV Fresh Cuts to you or Lara or Sat, um, even the DOPs, so the sound recorders, everyone taught me so much because it was my first time creating like something for TV. So it was like I was, you know, a sponge, literally just trying to get more information because I wanted to take it to, you know, further down into my career. What I found particularly challenging, I guess, being a mentor is that some, there's sometimes I don't know what to say. I don't know how to help them. I don't know mm. how to direct them. And I think that's part of them discovering 
their own journey and their own path. I think it would be wrong for me to say, look, you should do this, you should do that. It's all about their journey and how they make it what they want to make it. With Anil, it felt, you know, even though it was a mentor-mentee relationship, it does feel more like peers. Mm. And that's what I had also with um, Riffy, who's here, who mm -hmm. was the mentee on my blog this year, um, which is really nice. I, I agree, like, mentoring can be very much, like, fulfilling on both sides. Mm because you never really stop learning. Yeah. I don't think no matter what your job title is, you should like be open to learning, like mm. from runner level to mm. kind of commissioner level, like definitely. So what are the best sort of qualities that you should look for when you're looking to find a mentor? And how's the best way, if you're part of a particular scheme, it's easier, but how's the best way to approach someone and say, will you be my mentor? I feel like it's chemistry, kind of, like, uh, definitely a point that you make if it's outside of a scheme as well. Most of the time, mentors also work, yeah. so mm -hmm. they're not always available at the kind of, like, you know, the beck and call, but I think it's about there being that fluidity and flexibility in terms of, like, checking in. Um, I think, going back to your original question as to what should the mentee expect, um, I think just be open to learning, open to be kind of, like, challenged, um, because you kind of should want to grow. Um, there were often times that like me or my mentor at the time had difficult conversations, but looking back, I definitely need to hear certain things. Um, and I think on the flip side, as a mentor, you should just make sure that you are very much like aware that not everyone understands information the way that you do. So like just having good communication skills, definitely. Um, yeah, I agree with Louise, like compatibility with a mentee and mentor is so important. Um, as before, I don't have a mentor. I think it's still something I'm looking for as I navigate this industry. Um, but right now I'm just taking it from different people. But what a mentee should look for, I guess, is that compatibility I think is such an important thing because you, know, you have these conversations and sometimes they even steer away from the industry or work it steers into like personal life and you know like what you go through mentally or, or emotionally so i think compatibility is for me like that most importance when looking for a mentor it's always worth getting in touch with people i mm. genuinely genuinely believe that and i've gotten in touch with people and they've been generous with their time and people have gotten in touch with me and you do at least like still try and meet but um and then if that connection is there it, it carries on mm -hmm. but it, it is worth um being clear on what it is you're needing at mm. that point when you go out looking for someone. I guess in terms of the qualities, I'd say resilience, determination, because you mm. will get a lot of no's, a lot of, not even no's, just people that won't get back to you yeah. as well. Um, but you just have to keep on going and keep on persevering because at the end of the day, it's your dream, it's your goal, it's not their goal. They're, they've got their own little life going on. You know, if, as, as it said in Sister Act, if you want to be somebody, if you want to go somewhere, you better wake up and pay attention. Mm. But it's definitely true. Um, if you do want to go yeah. somewhere, if you want to be somebody, you have to put yourself in the spotlight and put yourself out there.